When this homeless man saw an old lady struggling to cross the street, he could not sit by and watch it happen. He stood up and guided her hand so she could cross safely. It was a simple act of kindness, but what the lady did as a response made the homeless man burst into tears. Martin always sat at this particular intersection. It was one of the busiest places in the city, so that meant that there were lots of people with change to spare. And during this particular morning, he could use every bit of that money. Martin was extremely hungry and didn't have a dime to his name. The poor homeless man shook his cup and occasionally a random passerby would drop down a few pennies. It wasn't much, but Martin never complained and always smiled. He was happy with every form of kindness and that's when he saw it. The traffic lights turned green and an old lady started crossing. She started at the same point as the other pedestrians, but after a few seconds, she fell behind severely. This woman was slow and was struggling to cross the street in time. Everyone around her paid the old woman no mind and simply kept walking. But Martin saw how oncoming cars already started moving. How can they leave her stranded like that? Martin thought to himself. So the homeless helper did the only thing he could do in that situation. He ran across the cross section and signaled the cars to stop or move around the elderly woman. Martin then grabbed her hand and guided her to safety. Once on the other end, the old woman looked up at Martin for the first time. It felt weird because people usually avoided eye contact with a homeless man like himself. But the old lady showed gratitude. She realized that no one helped her except for him. It was like I was invisible, she said. Martin laughed after hearing that comment because he knew the feeling all too well. That's the exact feeling you also get when you're homeless like me. The old woman nodded, agreeing that they had this fact in common. She also added that she wanted to thank Martin for his service. Martin simply smiled and said that he didn't want anything from her. I helped you just out of the kindness of my heart, madam. But the old woman insisted, stating that this was exactly why he deserved what she would give him even more. The old woman pulled a thick envelope from her bag. She said her name was Christine and then went on to place the large envelope inside Martin's hands. There is something special inside this package just for you, but you can only open it once I'm gone. Use it wisely and don't be greedy, she said. Martin looked at Christine, confused. He wanted to ask Christine what she meant, but before he knew it, she was gone. Suddenly, the old lady seemed pretty fast, which was odd. After a few minutes, she was completely gone from sight, which gave Martin permission to open the large envelope. What's inside this thing? He wondered. At first, he expected to find some cash since the old woman told him not to be greedy. But to his surprise, Martin found three smaller sized envelopes inside. What is this? Martin stared at the smaller envelopes in confusion. They seemed numbered from one to three. But why? And what was inside? Martin reached down, and his first instinct was to open all the envelopes at once. But then he remembered Christine saying, Don't be greedy. Maybe she was referring to this part. Martin decided to open just the first envelope, and then he found a receipt for a dry cleaner inside. What the hell is this? Martin felt like he was being punked for some reason, and the confused homeless man looked around to see if there were camera people hiding somewhere. But except for the usual traffic crowd, the intersection was quiet. In the end, curiosity won, and the homeless man moved toward the address. Martin knew the address well because it was near the city's homeless shelter. So after a quick 10 minute walk, he arrived at the dry cleaner. Martin was nervous to go inside because the place felt too clean for a man of his stature. But after a deep breath, he overcame his fear and ventured in. Martin showed the dry cleaning number he had found in envelope one and gave it to the man behind the counter. The man looked at the ticket and scanned Martin's demeanor quickly before politely smiling to get his order. The owner came back with a beautiful garment fit for a sharply dressed man. It was amazing but Martin was confused about what to do with it. Who does the outfit belong to? Do I have to bring it to someone? But the owner said that the outfit hung there for a while. And the note on the hanger said that the one with the ticket owned the outfit. Martin couldn't believe these words. He wasn't the owner of this outfit. He simply got an envelope that suggested he needed to come here. What do I do with this? This is much too nice for me, Martin stated. But the owner persisted and even allowed Martin to change clothes in the staff restroom. Martin felt like a million bucks when he stepped out of the restroom. But he still didn't know why he got these clothes in the first place. What do I do now? The well-dressed homeless man asked himself as he left the shop. There was only one thing he could do. Open envelope number two. 
Inside that paper, container was just a simple message this time. Go to 22nd Fleetwood Road. There, a hairdresser will already be expecting you. Martin stared at the piece of paper in confusion. Was he going to get a haircut? And how could this hairdresser already know that he was coming? Martin got emotional as he started walking toward the address. Why would someone be this kind to him? He just helped her cross the street. After a short walk, Martin reached the hairdresser. The homeless man spent most of his life on the street, so he knew every inch of this town. The door opened, and when it did, the front doorbell rang, indicating that a customer, in this case, Martin, had entered. The barber focused on Martin, who stood shyly in the door opening. Normally, establishments would shun a homeless man away instantly, but when the barber saw Martin's envelope, he welcomed him gladly. He placed Martin in a comfortable chair and started washing and cutting his frizzy hair. I don't have any money to pay you, Martin said, but the hairdresser instantly replied that this treatment would be free. Free? What the hell is going on? Martin asked, but the hairdresser was not allowed to say. He did, however, state that if he was envelope number two, then Martin would find out soon enough. I suggest that you open the third package the moment I'm finished with your hair. And so Martin did. He walked out of the store with neatly cut hair and unfolded the final envelope. The third envelope had multiple items. It contained a little over $1.30, an unknown address, and a written note. Martin unfolded the written note and read, Hi there, the money inside is yours. Do with it as you please, but grab a bus to this address if you want to know more. The homeless man was conflicted. That amount of money was well over two days worth of begging for him. It would provide a hot meal, and he was still starving. It was even enough to afford a warm bed in the city's homeless shelter, which was a much better accommodation than sleeping under a bridge. In the end, curiosity won, and Martin passed up on the meal in bed. He wanted to know the final answers to this puzzle. And following Christine's quest did not disappoint yet. It had already brought him new clothes and a fresh haircut, so who knows where this final envelope could lead him. Martin's confusion had turned into excitement. He arrived at the bus station and walked toward the ticket booth with a smile on his face. One bus ticket that will take me to this address, please, he said to the booth employee, who carefully smiled back, not knowing why this man was so happy. The bus ride took Martin way out of town. This part of the city was unfamiliar to him. The homeless man knew all the city's urban areas, but there were mostly trees and vast open fields around here. After about 30 minutes, the bus stopped in front of the biggest house Martin had ever seen. The house and the property, it were very imposing. And even though Martin wore nicer clothes, he still felt out of place. Nerves filled up his body again as Martin made his way to the mansion's front door. The doorbell rang and Martin expected Christine to open up, but he got something else. A tall and slender man opened up and he scanned Martin from top to bottom. At first, his face was stern. But as he noticed the clothes and Martin's needly combed hair, his demeanor changed. Come inside, sir, the man requested. We were already expecting your arrival. Martin stepped into the hallway, confused. The hallway inside the mansion was massive. It had detailed wooden paneling all over, and in the center of it, a spiral staircase that twisted upwards at least three floors. Martin scanned the room in amazement, and then suddenly saw the old lady appear. Hi, Martin. I see you've met my butler. Martin followed Christine further into the home. Oh my, you smell very nice, she complimented Martin, to which the homeless man smiled, stating that besides the bus ticket, he also bought some deodorant with the money received. I wanted to make myself presentable, to match the clothing and the haircut. Well, that is great. It proves even more that I made the right choice in choosing you today, Christine said with a broad smile on her face. Martin politely kept following the old lady, but he did wonder and ask what she meant by that. What do you mean? The right person for what? The old lady did not answer and simply demanded that Martin move along. They eventually reached the main dining room of the house, and to Martin's surprise, food was already prepared and plated for them once they got there. Come sit down and eat with me, Christine said to the starving Martin. At that point, Martin was overjoyed and truly happy that he had chosen the bus ticket over a quick meal and a bed. He sat down and breathed in the smell of freshly baked bread. While the happy homeless man took his first bite, Christine placed a document on the table between them. My husband wrote the file inside this document. I loved that man with all my heart, 
and every bit of wealth you see around you is here because of his hard work. Unfortunately, he passed away a few years ago, but not before he presented me with an important mission, and it's inside this document. Christine and her husband never were able to have children of their own. They tried for many years, but eventually they gave up on the idea altogether. But there was one problem. They were not getting any younger, and with all this money came great responsibility. They needed to do something with it. In the end, Christine's husband decided that a large portion of the money needed to go to something who truly deserved it. Someone who had pure heart, and someone who did not already come from wealth. Christine's husband trusted her to make this important decision. And I did do so today. Carl, my husband, always trusted my judgment and knew I would do right with his money. So, ever since his passing, I've been holding onto the envelope with his instructions. I waited for the right time and the right person to give it to. Charles said that I would know when I saw this person. Christine admitted right then and there that she knew Martin was this person when she locked eyes with him. Martin couldn't believe this statement. Tears were already forming in his eyes as she spoke those words, and he tried to stay humble. But Christine persisted. My intuition is never wrong. Christine pushed the document toward Martin, who immediately put it down his cutlery. She allowed him to read through the contract at his own pace. And once you're done with it, you can sign at the bottom. When you do, it makes you our sole heir, giving you a large portion of my husband's wealth. Martin read the large numbers on the page and could no longer hold back his tears. He burst into tears because this amount of money would change his life forever. Not only did it get him off the street, but it was enough so he would never have to work a day again. The generosity of this couple was beyond amazing, and they entrusted all of it to a stranger. But according to Christine, it felt like she had already known Martin for much longer. I believe that we are kindred spirits in a way. Martin signed the document, and they talked the rest of the evening. Christine's butler drove the thankful homeless man back to the city when all was said and done. Martin was ready for a bright future, and bright it would be. After that day, a half year passed in which Martin and Christine did not speak. The old woman still was happy with her decision, but a problem arose. The old woman was well over 80 years old and started feeling the strain of life in her bones. This large house was getting too much for her. She already lived mostly on the ground floor, and even though staff members took care of the grounds and tough chores, Christine needed one-on-one -on -one care. That's why she called an agency that would send medical and support staff to her house for this particular need. They even promised her that a worker would arrive the very same day. Christine was happy with this promise because help was very much needed. After a few hours, the doorbell rang. Christine opened the door herself this time, fully expecting a stranger in a white coat to appear. But what she got was something very different. The old woman looked up and was in shock instantly. In front of her was Martin who looked well-groomed and had a broad smile on his face. Hi, Christine. The happy man hugged the woman who had improved his life, and Christine was happy to see him again. He explained to her that the donation made by her and her husband changed his life. He no longer had to work for his money anymore, but he did want to do good. That's why Martin chose to volunteer. He chose to help an organization that cared for senior citizens because it was a senior citizen who gave him a second chance at life. He had already worked there for a couple of months, and when he heard that Christine called for help, he jumped at the chance. Christine was overjoyed and thanked her friend for his nurturing nature and pure heart. Together, they built a beautiful friendship that went far beyond the caretaker and patient role. They became an integral part of each other's lives, and it all started with a simple act of kindness by the most unlikely person.